Space-Based Opportunities in CPG. My name is Josh Haslin, Research Director for CPG here at Lux, and I'll be moderating today's session. Now, presenting today is my colleague, Tim Apachanda, Senior Analyst here at Lux Research and an individual who focus, focuses on waste-based opportunities. <clears throat> Throughout the webinar, any questions that you have can be typed into the box on your screen. Time permitting, we'll answer all those questions that we can, but if your, answer, if your question doesn't get answered, please do not hesitate to email it to questions at luxresearchinc.com and we will respond. With that, I wanna jump straight into the presentation. So, so Tim, the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, Josh. Uh, uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me begin with a story. When we turn back the pages of history, food waste was a problem in the ancient civilizations too, say Rom Roman civilization, Sumerian, Mesopotamian, and Indian civilizations. We have heard stories of King Herculean, who used to divert rivers through the lanes of the villages to clean up waste. He believed the solution to pollution was dilution. Today we know that approach doesn't work anymore. Fish was one of the most popular food during the Roman times. A disposing of the fish guts and bones was a major concern during those days. They gutted all the small fish, mainly sardines and mackerel, then put everything, guts and bones, into stone tanks or large clay pots and covered them with different amounts of salt and seawater. They left these large pots in open sun for the fermentation process to continue. After a year, the bony sediment settled at the bottom and the vat, uh, of the vats and the thick dark liquid on the top became a luxury fish paste of Roman gastronomy. They called it a, a garum. Garum, the product developed in the third and fourth century BCE, is about 2,500 years old. This funky flavor enhancing fermented sauce with a robust umami taste, a product of ancient traditional knowledge, still continues to be a premium product even today in the culinary world. I checked it on Amazon today and it sold at 30 US dollars for 100 ml. This is the classic example of food waste valorization where food waste is turned into a premium product. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the theme of the webinar today. Once again, a warm welcome to you all. So today, in today's, uh, today's webinar, we'll cover uh, the current state of food waste and what are the opportunities available for food waste valorization and how do we prioritize them? And then we'll look into some of the key challenges in this particular space. Food waste is a global issue that has far-reaching impacts on environment, economy, and society. When food waste is dumped in landfills, it contributes to the production of methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Both the natural and the financial resources used to grow, process, and transport of food also gets wasted when the food is thrown away. Let's try to understand how massive this food waste problem is. According to the Worldwide Fund for Nature and Tesco. In their report in 2021, they revealed that food waste is about 2.5 billion tons globally every year. Agriculture alone produces about 4 billion tons of residues every year. And 40% of the food waste happens at retail and consumer levels. The carbon footprint of food waste are estimated at 3.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere every year. It's said that if food waste was a nation, it would be the third largest carbon dioxide emitter in the world after China and the US. Well, the monetary value of food waste is 1 trillion US dollars. It's a great opportunity for food ag and the CPG players to take advantage of this free untapped resources and valorize it and create new revenue sources. One may wonder, are there any global actions to reduce food waste and uh, uh, take advantage of this? 
tackling food waste has been a difficult problem for multilateral organizations like the United Nations. The United Nations, through its SDGs, aim to halve food waste by 2030. Though it's, a, it's an ambitious goal, the focus of SDGs is on food waste at the retail and consumer levels, which is just one part of the overall problem. It overlooks waste that occurs earlier in the food supply chain, such as on farms or during processing and transportation. We have seen in the earlier slide that agriculture residues itself contributes to 4 billion tons of waste. Moreover, SDGs targets are non-binding and there are no enforcement mechanisms in place to ensure that countries take action to meet such goals. Well, in addition to ecological responsibility to tackle food waste, I see a huge business opportunity for companies to venture into valorization and have a slice of this $1 trillion pie. Let's go deeper into the subject and try to understand how and where food waste is generated. Food waste is produced from production to consumption, the entire supply chain. At production level, uh, the waste is generated because of uh, crop pests or diseases during harvesting, storage, and transportation. At the consumption level, the appearance of food is vital. Consumers are looking for food like men and women in uniform. They want everything to be of the same size, color, shape. So grading of food waste creates a lot of waste. Other factors like expiration dates, consumer behavior, of buying excess food and overstocking by retailers results in a huge amount of food waste. At the production level, about 14% of food is wasted and at the consumption level, about 17%. More than 80% of the Americans discard perfectly good consumable food simply because they misunderstand expiration labels. Labels like sell by, use by, expires on, best before, best by are confusing to people. And in an effort to not risk the potential of foodborne illness, they toss it in the garbage. So where does this food finally end up? This food moves from this little garbage from our households to the larger garbage bins and to the largest garbage bins which I call them landfills and open dumps. The landfills contribute about 37% and open dump about 33% where the food waste ends up. And, and about 11% of the food waste is incinerated and a very small percentage, about 5% is valorized into compost. So now the question is, is there a business opportunity beyond composting of food waste? If we just consider the landfills and open dump, which is about 70%. Food waste is available, uh, such large quantity of food waste is available for valorization with a monetary value of about $700 billion. So let's look into what are the opportunities available for prioritizing the food waste. Food waste valorization is a process of converting food waste into higher value products that could contribute back to the food supply chain, such as biofuels, fertilizers, and animal feed, and chemicals. The goal of the food waste valorization is to reduce the environmental impact of food waste by minimizing the amount of waste sent to the landfills, while also creating value from waste streams. This contributes to uh, the circular economy approach where useful materials, once seen as a waste, is recycled back into the supply chain to create new products. Interestingly, Plant Kingdom, a main, the main, a main source of food waste, has more than 20,000 bioactive compounds that could be used as feedstock. Today, many CPG companies have to pay for getting rid of their uh, food waste or incinerate them. Instead, food waste could be a new revenue uh, source. After COP27, more than 2,000 CPG players have pledged to go carbon neutral. So it's an easy route to reduce their scope 3 emissions. All this looks like a walk on the cake, I would say, before, uh, before the CPG companies jump into food waste valorization, they need to understand 
three important metrics. At Lux, we have developed a framework to understand food waste and options for valorization to help companies to make informed decisions. Companies need to understand these three important metrics before they get into food waste valorization programs or projects. They are commercial readiness, waste characterization, and valorization potential. Let me take, uh, take you through these three metrics. Let me begin with waste characterization. Food waste can be grouped into defined waste and undefined waste. Defined waste is where the source of waste is from a single source, say coffee grounds, bravery spent grain. We call it as high waste characterization. When food waste is derived from more than five sources, or we can call it as undefined waste, say waste from retail outlets, household waste, here the, it is, it's basically low waste characterization. And medium is when the waste are from two to five sources, say marine waste or slaughterhouse waste. So waste characterization helps to identify the most appropriate valorization pathways for food waste. For instance, for instance, uh, ingredient informatics is defined in defined waste, say coffee grounds, is well studied and documented than a complex waste where the composition keeps changing with the uh, diverse waste streams and seasonal factors. Let's move to commercial readiness. Commercial readiness refers to the state of technology or a company in terms of its ability to enter the market and generate revenue. It's a measure of how well a technology or a company has developed and tested its product or service, established partnerships and commercial and customer relationships, and demonstrated the ability to scale up operations and generate sustainable revenue streams. Here we categorize the commercial readiness under three groups, low, medium, and high. Low is where the technology is still in the early stage of research with a, with a say, proof of concept state. Medium is where technology is in the early state of research with few commercial solutions. And high is where uh, there are early stage startups and few companies are offering commercial solutions. Assessing commercial readiness is important for investors as they seek to identify promising technologies or companies that have the potential to generate uh, ROI. It is also important for entrepreneurs and innovators as they seek to develop technologies and companies that can successfully enter the market and generate revenues. Food waste can be valorized for production of say fertilizers, animal feed, food and beverage ingredients to high value products like essential oils. We can see a progression and an incremental value as we move from fertilizers to oils in this particular slide. This we call it as valorization potential. It refers to the value that can be derived from food waste through various processes. In our framework, if the valorization of food waste is for the production of say compost or biochar, we call the valorization potential is low which is designated by a small bubble compared to high value products like essential oils and nutraceuticals where the valorization potential is high, which is represented by a larger bubble. It is not a rule of thumb that this linear progression should follow the path that we listed over here. For example, there could be a, a, a animal feed product of higher value than a food or a beverage ingredient and so on. The important point to understand is that the valorization potential with the available technologies uh, and evolve a strategy to, uh, to generate higher revenues. Until now, we have discussed three metrics, namely waste characterization, commercial readiness, and valorization potential which are important to prioritize waste. 
let's place some sources on the axis and see the valorization potential. You can see that the defined waste, where food waste is from one source, such as coffee waste, spent bravery grain, the size of the bubble is bigger. The valorization potential is high. Whereas waste from food services, such as restaurants, retail outlets, if it is valorized to say compost or biochar or animal feed, the valorization potential is low and the size of the bubble is smaller. Again, I want to stress here that this is not a rule of uh, thumb um, that with appropriate technologies, the valorization potential can be moved to higher levels. Let me take you through uh, some examples. Café Buno is a Denmark-based startup that valorizes coffee grounds. It first extracted the lipid portion of coffee and branded it as Cafoil, which is sold as an active ingredient, ingredient in cosmetics and several with several scientifically proven benefits of this product, such as anti-aging, moisturizing, wound healing, and UV protection. This ingredient is also used by the food industry for different applications. The company then started finding use cases for the defatted fibers in food and cosmetic industries and branded it as Kefiber. In the, in the, food, in the food industry, it is used as a, nutrient, a nutritional ingredient with high content of insoluble fiber, protein, potassium, and magnesium. In the cosmetics industry, it serves as an exfoliating agent. Café Buno received a $2.8 million grant from the European Innovation Council for building the world's first coffee biorefinery in Denmark, which will be fully operational by the second quarter of this year. This company feels that in 10 years from now, coffee grounds will no longer be considered as a, as a waste. That's an awesome vision for other companies to emulate. Coffee grounds has several bioactive compounds such as polyphenols, minerals, lipids, proteins, and many more, which has several applications in food, cosmetics, and nutraceutical industry. However, multi-extraction approaches for upcycling or valorizing coffee grounds is still in its early stage. Like Café Buno, which started extracting lipids and then moved to fiber and functional food, that's the way to go for companies to understand the ingredient informatics and extract them with appropriate innovative technologies. As we discussed earlier, when the waste characterization index is high, I mean single source waste like coffee grounds, the valorization potential is also pretty high. As I mentioned, it's not, a, it's not the rule of thumb that only defined waste can have a high valorization potential. I would say defined waste like coffee grounds or bravery spent grain has a default advantage due to the better understanding of ingredient informatics. There can always be deviation from the normal, complex waste from multiple sources or say undefined food waste can be transformed into a high value product. Let's look into a case study. Do Good Foods is a US-based company that aggregates food waste from 450 supermarkets across the Pennsylvania region and valorizes it into chicken feed. The process, the process that they adopt is pretty simple. The aggregated food waste is sorted for non-food items like plastic. Then it is ground into a solution or a soup and, they are, and it is dried in large vats and pelletized into a chicken feed. Here you can see that the waste characterization is low because it's a retail outlet waste, which is undefined. And the, fo and the food waste is from more than five different sources. The, the commercial readiness is high because the company has come out with a viable commercial solution to turn an undefined waste into a product. Here, it is chicken feed. This company could have settled down by turning this food waste into animal feed, which most companies do. But they walked an extra mile 
and started their own poultry business, which changed the valorization potential or the value accrued from the food waste. They branded the chicken and it was marketed as carbon reduced chicken in supermarkets at a price close to the organic certified chicken. Do Good Chicken today is sold at seven US dollars per pound, where the, where the, other, where the other conventional uh, chicken is sold at about three US dollars per pound. That's how they could add value to, the, to their business with, a, with, a, with an annual turnover of, turnover of $6.5 million in 2022. This is an example of undefined food waste and how innovative strategies can turn a low valorization potential product into a high value product. Walking an extra mile from chicken feed to their own branded chicken made all the difference. There could be such innovative examples to emulate in your waste streams. Until now, we discussed about food waste valorization with some examples. Now the question is labeling the valorized products. How do you say a particular product is valorized or upcycled? Are there any third party organizations that assures or ratifies uh, those claims? In 2020, an association called Upcycle Food Association was formed. And this has made tremendous progress in the past two years. Since 2021, this association have in the, the members of this association have invested about 769 million US dollars for food waste valorization. The growth has been more than 10 times since in the past two years. The Upcycle Food Association claims that about 840 million pounds of food waste has been diverted annually because of the food valorization efforts. Currently, there are 236 upcycled food products and ingredients in the market. Now let's move on to the next uh, important aspect that is the key challenges. Though food waste has tremendous potential to generate new revenue sources, it has some challenges. The challenges are consistent supply of food waste, appropriate technology for scaling, and regulatory barriers. Let, let's, look some, uh, let's look at some examples and how companies are addressing these challenges and learn from them. Let me begin with the first challenge, consistent supply of food waste. Compost Now is a US-based company that provides composting services for households and businesses, while Fertile Ground is a UK-based company that produces organic compost and soil amendments from the food waste. The major challenge for both these companies is sourcing enough food waste to maintain a consistent composting operation. To overcome this challenge, these companies have developed partnerships with local farmers markets, grocery stores, schools, households to collect their organic waste. So partnering with food waste producing entities are very important to get a consistent supply of feedstock for valorization. And if you want to move beyond composting of food waste to higher value product, such as animal feed, companies need to find an appropriate technology to scale their operations. For example, wet food waste, such as fruit and vegetable scraps and slaughterhouse waste pose a significant challenge for valorization due to its high moisture content. Appropriate technology is needed to efficiently process wet food waste and extract value from it. AgriProtein is a UK-based company that uses black soldier fly larvae to valorize organic waste, including wet waste and meat waste into protein and fat rich insect meal. The insect meal is then used as uh, an animal feed ingredient in aquaculture, poultry and pet food industries, thus adding value to the food waste. 
There are several other companies that are using black soldier fly larvae and mealworms for valorizing food waste. Understanding regulatory systems are vital for scaling food waste valor uh, for scaling food waste valorization. For instance, the EU novel food regulation sets out rules for the approval and marketing of novel foods, including foods that are derived from new processes or technologies. Some valorized food products may fall under the definition of novel foods and may need to be approved by the European Food Safety Authority before they can be marketed in the European Union. The US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, uh, has a generally recognized as safe notification or grass notification, which is very important for clients uh, in food waste valorization. Companies that are developing valorized food ingredients in the United States may need to submit a grass notification to the FDA, which establishes that the ingredient is safe for consumption based on the review of available scientific da data. Companies need to understand the policy landscape first before developing plans for food waste valorization. With that, I would like to leave here with three key takeaways. Number one, food waste impacts environment, economy, and society. And there's a umpteen opportunity for valorizing food waste because the monetary value is about a trillion US dollars. Valorization of food waste is an early stage of growth and has tremendous potential to generate new revenue streams. CPG companies should formulate pertinent valorization tactics using the three metrics of what we call as a Lux framework. Hope you enjoyed the webinar. Thank you very much. Let's take a couple of questions. Thanks. Hi, and thanks, Tim. Um, you know, as, as Tim just said, we'll now be taking questions that you may have in the presentation. Um, again, you can type those into the Q&A box if you have them now. Um, and as I look, we, we have a few coming in, Tim. So let me uh, get to a couple of these as, as we have a, a few minutes to, to talk. So the first one is, as you kind of talked through the webinar, you brought up that you know, finding a particular source and, and having enough of it and the quality of it is important. You talked about, in that case, uh, some complex examples, complex waste examples. What about for a more defined waste? What are the challenges for you know, assessing that particular waste stream and, and, and its quality? Yeah, one of, uh, yeah, that's a good question, Josh. Uh, uh, one of the major challenge for the single source waste or the defined waste is uh, is the limited volume. If you consider, say, coffee grounds, uh, sourcing coffee grounds is a major challenge because it's totally decentralized. Coffee grounds are produced in houses, small restaurants, uh, food units, retail units, uh, and also by the large uh, coffee processing uh, uh, units. So uh, having collaboration with uh, those coffee processing units is, is very important. Unlike uh, um, breweries spent grain, which are produced by large breweries and uh, food waste valorizing companies or startups can have a direct collaboration with, uh, you know, with, the, uh, with the brewery companies. So, so uh, getting uh, volumes for waste valorization is a major challenge in, in sources like uh, coffee grounds. Got it. So very much the, you know, the regional association of that waste for where it's processed all that you know where, where coffee's produced versus where you know the waste is coming into a brewery and exiting obviously two very different scenarios that that may very well require different strategies so as you think about your defined waste obviously it's very important you know outside of those three framework measurements we brought up to to also take into consideration this this regionality the, the where okay okay yeah. uh, great so one, one other question with the remaining uh, couple seconds we have here. As you think about policies and, and how the CPG industry is, is faced with emerging policies, you know, are, are we entering a new policy stage for 
food waste um, enabling this, uh, perhaps slowing it down? What's your opinion here? Um, I see that in future there will be more uh, food waste specific policies that would emerge. At the moment, we have the EU and the US policies uh, wherein they aim to reduce 50% uh, of the food waste by 2030. There's not much of uh, binding um, uh, uh, rules or regulations attached to it. It's just a vision. Uh, so, But I see that uh, more than mere policies, there should be some incentives like tax credits or subsidies for the companies to encourage them to get into food waste valorization and reduce their scope, scope three emissions. I think such... Uh, incentives are not there. There's one which has come up very recently uh, that's in Europe. It's called the Clever Food Project of the EU, which is more uh, educating various stakeholders in food waste valorization and circular e economy and how they can be brought together uh, uh, so that it, it, it influences the national policies and also motivates companies to get into waste valorization. I think uh, in future, I, I foresee more of such activities, policies, and organizations coming to incentivize food waste valorization in the entire supply chain. Uh, Interesting. Yes. And, and the other one that uh, comes to mind is what's happening in France right now um, yes. around their policies in, in food uh, waste and, and saying, you know, we want to create a certification structure for the retail outlets, right, to uh, attach their progress in reducing food waste to that. Now, just to end on an interesting note here, that creates some, some really interesting questions, right? Will food waste um, be reduced, reducing access to the sources, or will there be more benefits in the future around this? And will we stay as kind of business as normal where consumers continue to, to throw their waste out, making it accessible for companies? Those are two conflicting views, right? Both of which yeah. Create opportunities, might take away opportunities. We haven't hit that balancing act yet, but but as you said, this waste uh, opportunities early, and it's likely to be a continuing aspect of this discussion as we move forward. So, so with that, I want to thank everybody for joining our webinar today. Uh, the slide presentation um, will be available for those, and and for those who, who perhaps didn't catch it, there will be um, a recording available um, after leaving the webinar today. Uh, please do uh, complete the survey that we've reached out. It really helps us to develop additional webinars in the future and, and get more aligned to, to interests of the world out there. Uh, so please take a, a minute to check that out and also take a minute to check out our, our upcoming webinars. I think there's lots there that are really interesting. So with that, have a great day and thank you all for attending. Thank you.